starting the interview, yeah, we're going to go right. s- from the start, innit? So, what were your, your early musical passions? Um, like, where did it start? Well, the first memory I have of, like, musical passion was, like, Radio 1, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Literally, like, Obviously, my brother kind of used to listen to the radio and, like, I clocked what he was doing. So I was like, okay. And I started listening on my own. So basically, I was just listening in my room, like, recording radio, like, at around nine, I remember. Mm. Used to record Tim Westwood back in the day, literally, yeah, yeah. like, listening to Ludacris and that. Obviously, I didn't even know who Ludacris was then. I was just like, Ah, who are these? Like, this is yeah, just yeah, sick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's vibes into it. Uh, I didn't know names. I just listened to the music, literally. Mm. So when was that the first time you, you started doing music yourself? Nah, that's just where where I first remember like yeah, yeah, listening yeah. to music and like just mm. being inspired and just listening to music and just literally thinking, rah, it's like, yo, I just like how this sounds. No, yeah, yeah. like, yo, it was just like, yo, how how does this sound so good? Like, that's what I used to think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Shit. when was the first time that you started getting into music yourself and was doing the, was it, you started producing or you started DJing or anything like that? Basically, I started singing first, you know, I was mm. in a, I was in a choir at church, so yeah. I was literally singing in, in church, like, and I used to love going to the front in it, they never used to pick me as the main person, so I just used to go to the front and sing loud, yo, <laughs> <laughs> just. Coming through it. So, when was yeah, that the first time you got into like I'll say it, the bass line scene yeah. or did, did, did you start on the B line when you were producing or DJ or did you start on something else nah basically when I was around I would say I was around 14 mm. someone showed me Fruity Loops FLP yeah yeah and I was just like okay what's this downloaded it and then just making beats like literally I won't even give it a genre because it <laughs> just <laughs> the, the, the genre was kicks and claps like literally <laughs> like in random places there was no genre yeah yeah sounding more like techno than anything mm. <laughs> so when was it, when was it when you first got into the b-line scene like was it a certain tune which you heard and it was like yeah I like this or was it just like semi went out and heard it and then you were like i'm gonna do this literally like baseline bro first tunes i remember hearing like i think it was displicit bullet cake or something mm um, and I lived in Jamaica for a, a year, so I came back to England. When I came back, everyone was playing this bullet cake, and I was like, yo, this ain't my type of music. Like, that's what I literally first thought, because I was thinking, Ras, this is dance. Like, I never thought this was, like, groovy and that. But yeah, yeah. After, after my brethren was just playing it and showed me how to dance to it and shit, I was like, yo, this is all right. <laughs> started, to, started to try and make my own and that. So mm-hmm. I was around 16 then. Yeah. Around 16 when I started to try and make my first tunes. First tunes I actually made, they, they got played in a club in Altrincham, no, Sale is. And it was called Alibi. <laughs> yeah. They used to like play bass line up there. So it was sick. Like, nothing, I know enough of the old heads my age, like my generation remember yeah, yeah. Alibi. It was it was a big spot back in the day. Mm. So did you start to touch decks after you seen your tunes getting spun in the rave and you were like, yo, I need to get on this? Or was it like after you started producing more you got on the decks right so how I DJ how I started DJing is kind of funny because I didn't even really want to DJ I wasn't really a DJ I was mm-hmm. just I just wanted to make beats yeah yeah and then it was this promoter from Leeds he was called Ninja and the guy was like do you DJ I was like nah you know he asked me one time I was like nah he asked me a second time I was like nah I don't DJ yo he asked me the third time I was like Okay, <laughs> and he, and just went and DJed, and yeah, it was yeah. actually at Mint Club. So any, any anyone who knows Mint Club, it's still popping to this day. Like back yeah, when I was, Mint's still about now. yeah, exactly. Like mm. when I was seventeen, that's the first time I played in Mint, and um, um, and that's oh twelve years ago. The club's the same club. It's a better sound system, but it's literally the same club. Same clubs. Mm. So, what were your favorite clubs to play at, at that moment in time? Like. You getting more sets at sixteen, or was the sets coming afterwards? I got more. Like I just started getting sets at like seventeen. So my first place was Mint. I was just playing Mint for a bit, and then um, they they went to Rio's too. Where else was I playing? Rio's, and then it started to like spiral after that. So my favorite places w- for playing was actually Leeds. Mm-hmm. There was this spot called Rio's, and anyone who knows about North versus Mids, 
I remember Rio's man, that place used to go absolutely off. Rio's and wet and vibe as well. Mm. Vibe, um, vibe, um, Sheffield. I yeah. used to love playing there too. So that's what they're seeing. But they're seeing like more like North versus Mids in in the baseline scene, like where you all went to. Was it literally like every club you went to was like when you're playing sets or was it? Nah, basically the, the event Rios. the event was called yeah the event was called North versus Mids. Mids. It was at Rio's, and I think it cha- no that's the first that is actually the first rave I played North versus Mids. Yeah, it started at um, Mint. It's actually started at Mint, then mm. moved to Rio's. But I just remember it being at Rio's because that was when it was just next level. It, were you clashing them times? Was it, was it actually proper clashes or was it just like... Nah, it weren't really cla- In fact, that's how the TRC clash started because basically his Esmond Joan rhythm, if you know it, that boom. Yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Like basically, I chopped that up in it. That's how um, we started clashing, but it was just music clashing and yeah, it was yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing malicious, just, yeah, yeah. just for fun. Mm. So, y- you're pretty active at the moment. Uh, yeah. you, you had the Boss EP and then yeah. you, you had Colin as well in it, did you really see? No, basically, Colin Two is what I'm gonna be releasing next. Right. So I'm just I'm just building up the hype on it because mm. I know people know about when I do you know when I changed to R and B and I started making R and B and things. So um, they know about Colin, and that's the first time I released any R and B. Yeah. Um, apart from Kiss Me There, some people know about Kiss Me There too. <laughs> that, that's way back. Everyone keeps telling me bring out Kiss Me There. I'm sorry, that's gone. That's gone. <laughs> it's in a, it's in a dust. But in the archive. Um, I brought I brought out Colin and. Um, for the people who supported me, obviously, I, I want to give him Colin 2. Mm. Colin 2 is going to be sick because I'm going to mix it up a bit in it. It's not going to be straight R&B because obviously I'm playing more bass line sets. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to give him a bit of bass line too in, on the, on the um, mixtape. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's going to be a lot more mixed up than the original uh, mixtape. Yeah, for sure, man. Mm. For sure, for sure. Any other projects coming apart from Colin? Um, I've got one that I wanted to release. I've got a project I wanted to release in the run up to Colin. So basically, um, it's kind of got an old school vibe. It's called This Moment. Yeah. I'm actually I actually haven't finished it because I'm waiting for the art um, the artwork. I wanna I wanna drop the artwork and then show people what's really really good with it. What's really coming. Yeah, so, is that, so is that gonna be like a baseline one though? Yeah, man, baseline. Yeah. So, so it's with baseline in it, like when you starting that with tunes like um, I got five on it and murder and all yeah, of these. Yeah. Obviously, like the the sounds changed over time, innit? Yeah, it? yeah. So how how do you think? Did, did you think it's changed for the better or for the worse? Honestly, I think it's for the better because I think um, producers have um, challenged themselves to be better. Like literally, like the old school sound. Obviously, how it was is. It was rough and it made people skank, but I feel like the production and the sound of the music these days is so much better than it was. Like it, yeah, makes, yeah. it makes the club jump. Like people were skanking back in the day, but now people are jumping. Like it's it's a different level. Yes, yeah, like we, we were saying the other week, isn't mm. it, that everything's mixed down. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. Every, everything sounds proper in it, but like before, like yeah. I kind of preferred baseline when it was before in it like to where it, where, it, where it is now yeah a lot of people say that yeah because it, it kind of sounds like it's more like bass house now and it? it's not even baseline do you know what i mean i hear what you're saying i won't even lie like the recent the, the ones that i'm going to be releasing now mm. i'm giving it that old school vibe but the vibe that i really love was the vibe actually before me so yeah i'm actually giving it more of an older school vibe than yeah where i was at i might go back to i might have to go back to the um, dazed. Um, I got five on it. All eyes on me. Yeah, Berger. you should. You should. In fact, I did with no mobile. I don't know if you heard no mobile, and that's uh, not. I, I'll play it for you. Yeah, you can see. You can see what you think of it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So obviously, like, um, because when people think of baseline, whenever I spoke yeah. to anyone, they always think burger boy, innit? Yeah, man. So yeah, when man. you start doing all of this, did you ever think you'd have such a big influence on the genre? Not at all, man. No, I was literally just having fun. Like when I was producing, I was just literally doing it because I love to do it, and I wasn't trying to make any scene. Like I, I never seen it being anything. Like yeah, I was literally just doing it and just loving playing my tunes in the club because that's where it got when it once it got to there. In fact, I just love making tunes from the start. But mm. once I got to the club, like it was even more fun. Like I was just yeah. like, yo, 
Because it's more hungry for more, Yeah, isn't it? for real. Yeah. So, like, it's baseline the only thing, though? Because, obviously, I know you've done that with Colin. You do a bit of R&B and that. Yeah, but yeah. Are, there, are those the only things you touch on? Do you never do, like, grime or, like, even, like, drum and bass and that, innit? Ooh. You know what? I, I mess with grime a bit. You see, Colin, it might it might have a bit of grime on it, you know. A it bit? Have, yeah, man. It might have a bit of grime on it, man. I, I, I'm exploring. I like to explore. Like That's why I made R&B, because I just yeah. I don't like to just stick with one thing. I never like to do that. I like to explore and see how far I can push myself and and what I can produce. But drum and bass, though. Drum and bass? Oh, man. You I never might, know, innit? You I never might, know. Nah, nah. What it is, I might just leave that to the uh, drum and bass producers because I won't even lie. I think it's hard, like drum and bass, yo. Well, I'm making drum and bass. No, not not hard to make. I mean, like when I go to the club and like yeah. the DJs are playing drum and bass, yo, I'm always moving, like <laughs> literally because they normally play before I come on, like because it's bass music too. Yeah, bro. I just might just leave it to them. They're the they're the um, professionals at that craft right there. Like so you just I don't want I don't want to d- destroy or disrupt what they're going with. Yeah, <laughs> st- stick to what you know, innit? Yeah, 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 exactly. So obviously, you got have you got any uh, any nights or anything like that coming up? Um, I'm playing in Birmingham mm. on the 24th. Yeah, Base Collective. Oh, I'm about to tear the roof off there. I'm ba- I'm back to back with Panther as well. So with Panther. Jeez, it's that's, about, it's, it's about that's gonna be, be a mad one, isn't it? Well. Yeah. Be When's that? Twenty fourth of, of this month, yeah. Yeah, twenty fourth in and Birmingham, I, and on the twenty fifth, I'm in Huddersfield as well for all of the up north. So, if you if back in the day, everyone used to travel to the Midlands like it was nothing anyway. So yeah. if you want to travel down and twenty fourth, or if you just want to go hoods, that's on the twenty fifth, isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No so, filter. Uh, so that's it for the interview now, isn't it? All right. So we're gonna right. get it down for the guest mix. Oh, you want oh is it? Solomon's got a question. Yeah, so, so the, the DDB song then? How, how did that come about? Uh, do you know what? DDB's kind of my brethren, you know. Yeah, have you known her for time, yeah? Yeah, I've, no, I've known her from way before, like, obviously, Leaned Out. That's yeah. like her big tune. Like, I knew yeah, yeah that's, like, that's what made the blow, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, basically, I just I just hit her up. Like, every time I hit her up, she's just like, how are you doing, in it? Because, literally, she's very genuine with me. So, yeah. She'd just be like, how are you? Are you okay? This and that. Like, And I was like, yeah, I'm good. And basically, she just told me, send her f- through some tunes. She sent me an email. Um, I just had some tunes there and then sent it on. And she used it and it literally got a million views, bro. Like, <laughs> like that. But nah, but it's DDB. Like that. Everyone loves DDB. Uh, right now, I like to play myself it? down now. Nah, DDB's hard, man. <laughs> she got her own back, thing back going. With that beat, though, what I was saying to someone was... Mm. If you listen to that beat, if you listen to that beat as well as listening to a old school Burger Boy beat, you can get elements from that beat to your older stuff mm-hmm. as well. You can tell there's there's something there which makes that a Burger Boy beat. Yeah, it's not just out of genre. Mm. For some reason, everyone everyone like from I first started producing bassline, like basically, everyone just said I had this sound. Like literally, there was something about the beats that I made. It, you could just tell that it was me that made it. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not sure how, how or why, but it's the I wobbles, guess it, man. It's it the just wobbles. is what it is. It's the wobbles. There's only certain producers these days that do that a lot. I think mm. DJ Q, you play Jack Junior as well, then as you mm-hmm. heard his beat. Yeah. Jack Junior does it. Palazay and J Six Nine, they're the only bass guys that I can think that have their own sound that you know as soon as you put that on. That's it's their track. Mm-hmm. I think that's a hard thing to do with producing. Man, you know, I feel as though if you just start, if you start and then you just love it, like, it's just, I feel like you're naturally going to find your own flow. Like, a lot of people are trying to be someone else or look up to someone a bit too much. And then that's when their sound really gets lost. But when you just have your own sound and then you're just enjoying what you're doing, obviously you get inspired by other people, but your core love for the music, it it will always show. So, So, you got an ad cut? An iconic tag as well, on it. So, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? When, when uh, my company? tag. Ah, uh, you know what? It's one guy from um, Sheffield called Malapi. Mm. Basically, he just he, he wanted a special in it, so I did a special for it. No, he wanted a special. Um, and he recorded it himself, I think. And literally, I put it on the tune in it. If you get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I just had the vocal there, and then one day I just used that vocal. 
from the special and just chops it up and put it before the drop. Yeah. And then because it because every time every time it, that tune drops, everyone was like B -b 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 burger boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just continue to use it and mm. then <laughs> was that your only tag then, the only one you've ever had? Yeah, I've never had another tag. Never. Yeah. Mm. Never. Is there any uh, DJs or producers which you like collaborating the most with or going back to back with in the scene? I don't collaborate much, me. Not much. Because and the reason is I just uh man, I'm just a psychotic lover of music, so <laughs> like it doing your own way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when I DJ, like literally, oh my god, I'm in a next next zone. I, I'm gonna see how Panther's gonna be able to handle me because I, <laughs> I got too much energy. Mm -hmm. So you say most of your sets are just you on your own, like you don't do many back to backs on the, on the thing, no. Nah, but obviously I'm gonna have fun with this Panther thing. See yeah, how yeah. it goes, but really and truly. Um, I'm a lone soldier, the lone wolf, a yeah, baseline yeah. man. Trust me. That's what it should be sometimes though. Get your few sound. Mm. Like, we want to get into this guest mix now, innit? All right, all right. Get these people what they want. They want these wobblers out there. All right, all right. <laughs> so we're gonna let's play a tune and to intro it, and then we'll get into it. All right. Bless up, people. 